Welcome to the AC 24-7 Top Story Countdown. We'll guide you through the biggest news of the day. Our focus, advocating our rights, advocating health, and advocating Earth. Here's our pick for number four. On Monday, the Colombian military released the drawings uh, made by the children. They were rescued after spending more than 40 days uh, in the Amazon rainforest. The four indigenous children, by the way, are still recovering in the hospital just behind my back, and that's where they made these drawings. It's interesting because this picture shows a new character that played uh, a key role in their recovery, this dog Wilson. Wilson is a canine unit uh, inscribed uh, to the Colombian special forces who apparently made contacts with the four children in the heart of the jungle and stayed with them for a few days before vanishing himself. And that's why many people here in Colombia are asking the government to keep the search and rescue operation going until even Wilson is found. Meanwhile, also on Monday, we spoke with a special forces general who described the situation on the jungle and explained why his men took so long to find the kids due to the difficulty of the terrain. Take a listen. We conclude with the evidence that maybe they walked about 20 kilometers. We compare the evidence with the tracks of our GPS we say, oh my goodness, we were very close to the kids, maybe about 100 feet. And General Sanchez also told us that his men will indeed try to stay in the jungle uh, until Wilson is uh, recovered, Wilson the dog. Uh, meanwhile, the kids who are expected to stay in hospital under medical observation for between two and three weeks, after which they will be allowed to leave uh, the premise and uh, go back to normal life. TheAdvocateChannel.com looks at the world through the lens of equality and inclusion. Subscribe, like, and share now. AC 24-7's Top Story Countdown continues with our producer's pick for number three. This is the first the world saw of BTS. No More Dream released 10 years ago this week. Alongside backstage footage of seven young men who could sing and dance, but few could have imagined the global stardom that would follow. From being the first K-pop group to debut at number one on the Billboard album chart, to securing the most weeks at the top spot of any artist, beating out Taylor Swift with 46 weeks at number one. International fans have been arriving in Seoul over recent weeks for 10th anniversary BTS tours, visiting anywhere the band has made famous. We waited for this moment for years and now it's finally happening. <laughs> A group of fans from the United States are flying in from different states for their pilgrimage, a trip seven months in the planning. We want to just, you know, eat the food that they've eaten, they must have really good taste, and just be in places where they've been, you know, music video shooting, uh, just to breathe the same air that they breathe. Top of the tour list, a bus stop on the East Coast where the band shot its album cover, You Never Walk Alone. A regular stop for fans who refer to themselves as The Army as well as the band's old home that's turned into a cafe and this building where the band's agency used to be. We caught up with two fans in Seoul who travelled all the way from Scotland, undergraduate students who consider this to be the first of many BTS-related trips to South Korea. It's emotional. It's very like, you're, you're happy, but it's very like, oh my god, like this is real. They attribute the band's longevity to the serious messages they portray in their lyrics, topics they can relate to. Their mental health talk is like, is unique to them, honestly. I know new bands are trying to do that, but BTS have done it in a way they haven't before. With two of the seven members currently serving mandatory military service here in South Korea, and the remainder to follow soon, the group's record label Big Hit reportedly says they could reconvene by 2025. Every member has also had success with a solo career so far. BTS is marking its 10 years with a new single, a new book and a festival by the river. Some fans are celebrating with a pilgrimage of anything their idols visited or touched or even ate. Like The Advocate channel on Facebook for the best way to get updates on stories that advocate for equality, justice, our rights, and more. AC 24-7 continues with today's top two pick. I've known him for 22 years. 
the only thing he understands is force. The only thing he understands is coming right at him and making your case. Chris Christie didn't disappoint on his vow to take on Republican frontrunner Donald Trump. In a 90-minute CNN town hall, Christie took aim at the former president for his alleged mishandling of classified documents. It is a very tight, very detailed, evidence-laden uh, indictment. And the conduct in there is, is, is awful. Whether you like Donald Trump or you don't like Donald Trump, this conduct is inexcusable in my opinion, for somebody who wants to be president of the United States. Christie not pulling any punches. Did someone remind him he's not the president anymore? You don't need these things anymore. This is vanity run amok, Anderson. Run amok, ego run amok, and he is now gonna put this country through this when we didn't have to go through it. The former New Jersey governor slamming many of his other GOP rivals for not criticizing Trump. They're playing political games with you. Because they think, if you kind of like Trump a little bit, and I don't say anything bad about Trump, and then Trump kind of implodes and goes away, then you're more likely to vote for me. Christie urging Republicans to think twice about the country. Christie issued this warning to voters. I am convinced that if he goes back to the White House, that the next four years will all be about him just settling scores. And he has shown himself, and I think most particularly in his post-presidency, to be completely self-centered, completely self-consumed, and doesn't give a damn about the American people, in my view. On policy, Christie took on the question over access to abortion. Leave it to the states. Let's leave it to the states, and if a consensus emerges, we'll know it, and if the federal government feels they need to step in then, I'd certainly consider that. Mr. President! Mr. President! He also leveled plenty of criticism against President Biden. The reason we're struggling to make ends meet is because government spending under Joe Biden has gone completely out of control and then took a dig at both Biden and Trump for their age. If those two people are the nominees, they're gonna be a combined 160 years old on election day. I'm sorry, guys, nobody beats father time. Nobody does. Follow The Advocate channel on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on stories that matter every day. Here's our number one story of the day. Take a look. What was once a rapid rise in prices from online shopping to the shell shock of buying eggs is now showing more signs of cooling, like a wildfire slowly contained. It does appear as if those dowsing of inflation fires, uh, the efforts by the Federal Reserve, do appear to be working. Mark Hamrick, senior economic analyst from Bankrate.com, says after more than a year of historic interest rate hikes from the Federal Reserve, those higher rates are helping to slow painful price spikes. New numbers out from the Labor Department today show consumer prices up 4% for the year ending in May. That's way down from more than 9% inflation last June. Consumers still have a right to be irritated by the current state of prices. We see food still up year over year. And as we know, going to the grocery store, there could be things like beef that feel like that's too expensive. Maybe we're going to go to the chicken instead. Gas prices are down broadly, but what we pay for electricity is still high. In terms of summer travel, hotel prices are climbing slower, and flying is getting a little cheaper. Compared to a year ago, airline fares are down, but there's a sense that they are still elevated. The overall encouraging inflation news may give the Fed cover to skip raising interest rates again at its next meeting tomorrow. Like a patient that needs to recuperate, uh, I think Federal Reserve officials want to sort of stand back, make some observations about how the economy is handling all of that, which has been in some ways shocking. In Los Angeles, I'm Mike Valerio. Thanks for watching The Advocate Channel's top stories. We're on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Follow, like, and share, or check out advocatechannel.com for even more stories that advocate for you.